Okay, this is a holding lesson. November 413 Papa Tango has been cleared to hold at Salinas VOR. Via proceed direct Salinas, maintain 5,500. Hold southeast of Salinas on the ILS final approach course. Make right turns, one minute holds. Those two directives would be uh, would be anticipated even if they were not included in the clearance. Time now is 2309 Zulu. Expect further clearance time of 2340 Zulu. So the first thing that we want to do when we receive a clearance to hold is to slow down. And we want to pull it back to 50% and 7 gallons an hour. Since we're short on time, we're going to go ahead and keep it going. But uh, it looks like we're getting a little warmer on the CHTs, so we'll, we'll uh, add a little bit more mixture, cool those CHTs back down below 360. But normally we would pull it back 50% and lean a peak about 7 gallons an hour, and that gives us a much better endurance than this, and it helps us to burn time, which is really what ATC is looking for when they're putting us into a holding pattern. They don't want us to burn fuel, they want us to burn time. So once we start proceeding direct, we want to make sure that that heading bug is synced as it is. And then we want to switch over to the bearing pointer uh, as a secondary means of navigation. And so we go ahead and switch that uh, Salinas in. I would use GPS just because it's a little bit more accurate, doesn't scallop back and forth. And so we'll select GPS as our source for Salinas there. And then what we can do is we can set up the course deviation indicator for the inbound leg that we're going to be flying after we get to Salinas VOR. So how do we manipulate the course here? Because if I twist this, it's not moving. How do I make that move? Do you remember, Mark? First we need to back out, and we go to OBS mode. If we're in heading mode, it won't chase the course when we start manipulating. If we were to start twisting this in nav mode, it would start chasing that needle and trying to intercept that new course. But we're able to adjust this to whatever we want if we're in heading mode, and we just track the bearing pointer on inbound. So we twist this around to the inbound portion of our hold, and what is that? inbound course. 311. 311. So we select 311. A GPS is going to read a couple degrees off from what uh, a VOR or a localizer would read. We can see that it's a little bit displaced off a of Chular. So we could tweak it another two degrees if we wanted to in order to compensate for that. And that lines it up a little bit better with the ILS. Looks like maybe one degree in the middle. That looks like it goes right over Chular for the ILS. So, so this is our way of synthesizing with GPS or deriving uh, the, the same inbound course as the ILS would provide us. And it's a lot easier to deal with than the localizer, especially at that close of a distance and that high up above the airport. So uh, we've got that all set up for our uh, inbound course for the ILS, for our hold. And now the main thing is to make sure that we're tracking our bearing pointer. And so bearing pointer tracking can get a little bit challenging if you change altitudes or if the wind direction changes as the bearing pointer will start to shift if the wind changes uh, because uh, actually it's our track that's changing, right? If our track starts changing and it gets us off of the bearing pointer, then we're more like we're homing to the station where we want to be tracking to the station. So what we can see right now is we're about one degree off of our bearing pointer. You see that the track is just a little bit to the left of our bearing pointer. So if we were to click one degree of heading to the right... And that's the dotted line versus the yeah, actual solid the, line. You want to keep that dashed line of your track going right down the bearing pointer. Okay. So if we click at one degree to the right with our heading mode, heading bug, we'll be tracking more directly towards Salinas. Also, if you zoom this in, you'll be able to see the same indication here 
as it goes to salinas. This is fairly useless, this minimum safe altitude. You're better off having track and desired track. If you keep those two numbers the same, then you would know that you're tracking directly to the uh, Salinas VOR. Uh, any of these methods will get you there, though. Tracking this right down there, down the line, keep, uh, keeping this uh, this line pointed directly at the Salinas VOR would work to keep you going there, and holding track uh, the same as desired track would keep you there as well, right on course. So. This enables us to have two forms of navigation going at the same time so that we can have our five T's basically completed before we get there. So we're, we're simulating that we'd be at the slowest practical airspeed at the lowest uh, possible fuel burn for the highest endurance. And uh, that would again be 50% power and seven gallons an hour. And now we're going to brief our T's before we arrive there. So we're going to turn to a heading when we get there. What, what heading are we going to turn to? Are we going to do a teardrop or a parallel? We're going to do a uh, uh, teardrop. You could do a teardrop, and that would be uh, how be many degrees of offset? 30. 30 degree offset, and it would be off to the left. And then we'll enter right turns after we get into the hold. So having this displayed up here allows you to visualize the side of the hold that you're supposed to be operating on. You just make a little line there, make a little uh, racetrack and say, okay, we're going to be making right turns like this. So we could either do a teardrop or we're pretty close to an acceptable parallel entry too. I prefer parallels personally. Anytime that I'm coming from anywhere on this half, I just do a parallel. Yep. Anytime I'm coming from this side, I do a direct. Now, that doesn't fly for the written test, but once you're done with the written test, you can do whatever you want as long as you stay on the protected side. What I do see is that occasionally a teardrop will not work for a student where the winds are very strong. Uh, from the protected side towards the unprotected side, you may find that yourself where you thought you did a 30 degree offset, but your track was only a 10 degree offset when that wind is really strong. So winds from here, you're 30 off, you're actually getting blown to something more like a parallel. And then what do you do? Yeah. You know, people do that turn back around out here and they get blown way out. So I have seen where teardrops can get you into the unprotected side. So with the parallel turn, you're safer by flying away from Onto yeah. the safe side because you're towards towards always going to be side. on the safe side because you can track it going outbound. Just three, four, ten, and then you can. When you're actually uh, ready to turn uh, outbound on localizer right now, I don't. Uh, it doesn't look like I've got any uh, itinerant IFR aircraft coming in the city in the next uh, at least half hour. Uh, three Papa Tango, uh, Roger. Uh, so this is acceptable for us to do a lap in the hold here at Salinas. Well, you can do as many as you want right now. Thank you very much, Three Papa Tango. Okay, so uh, now you can see we're starting to get a little off that bearing pointer, so what do we do? Which way? Yeah, we want to go to the right. So that track follows you everywhere you go. It's like your shadow, right? It's like your wind shadow. The, the wind uh, displays your track across the ground. Uh, very nicely using that uh, dashed line on there. And you can see our crosswind has gone up. So that's A lot of why. people get confused by that. They try to steer towards the track line. They don't understand that the track is going to go anywhere you go. So if you want it to go right, you need to pull yourself right. And uh, that looks perfect. And you can see here as well that we're going to go right over the top of it. Now we can go ahead and... Um, talk about the rest of our T's. So turn, let's say we're going to do a parallel this time. So we're going to turn to what? Turn to the 131. We want to track 131. So we're going to turn, looks like seven degrees to the right. Yep. We're going to time. We're going to time for a minute. You've got that up. We're ready to go. Start the timer. And you could also do a uh, approach. That was just a little too loud. You could do it this way, too. You could count down if you wanted to. If you count down, then it uh, it gives you a call-out. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, it says timer is expired. Okay, so we're going to turn, time, twist, we did already. We did the OBS and twist it in the course. Throttle, we talked about having it pulled back. And we're going to talk, advise them that we've entered the holding pattern uh, because this may be a non-radar scenario. He wants to know where we are. Okay, okay. so we just did that. So go ahead. And what else do we do? We turn. Uh, yep. We time. There. You're already twisted. Now you want to keep that track going right down the back side of that HSI. Right. So if your purple diamond is perfectly lined up, then you're right spot on to a parallel. Now you can see right here we're tracking 129. We'll probably need to track something more like 132. So let's go two degrees to the right. All right, do you see that that track line is now hidden behind there? And we are on the extended center line of the uh, ILS final approach course. We would go for one minute. Normally we'd be down at about 110 knots. If you had to hand fly it, you would want to use one notch of flaps because that uh, makes it a lot easier to hand fly Otherwise, your nose is almost four degrees nose up, and it's really kind of hard to hold that attitude. Uh, it just goes against everyone's uh, natural instinct, which is to hold more of a level attitude. There's Did the one you hear say it expired? Yep. So good. We turn to a 45-degree intercept. So we know we're always going to be on the protected side with a parallel entry. Now the wind may blow us a long way into that protected side. One Delta Lima, contact Monterey Tower, 118.4. But that's not a problem. 18.4 Delta Lima, good day. So how far do we go with that heading boat? We're going to go to, uh, where is it? Well, it's supposed to be a 45 degree intercept. All the way around, right? Yeah, so 45 beyond 311. Right. The delta between these two tick marks is 45 degrees. Okay. So and right there, that looks like 45, right? So what else would you uh, do now to make sure that it captured that inbound course? Get it now. Good. And from here, it's just going to capture and track inbound. Piece of cake. So this, I've only had to do a real hold like this probably once every 2,000 flight hours. So, you know, it may be a long time before you ever get told to do a hold, or if you're, uh, if you don't fly much, you may never see an actual hold in IMC conditions. But it can happen, and you do need to be prepared for it. And so that's why I make a big deal out of uh, teaching this maneuver. And it's definitely a big part of the instrument rating and the check ride that you go through. You can see the runway, so we're very nicely lined up with the ILS final approach course. We're right over the top of the runway there. Lined up dead on center. Excellent. I like the way you're sinking that heading book. So now we're looking for this to flip-flop. When that flip-flops, then we've arrived at the Salinas VOR. We're a half mile to go. When this goes from to to from, then we're going to spin that heading book to the outbound. And hit heading. Yep. All right, heading and twist. You also saw that bearing pointer sweep through there. When it sweeps through the 90 degree point, you've just passed by the, the uh, VOR. I had about two degrees extra on that outbound, didn't I? What's that? I had about two degrees extra on that outbound. And then when I see it flip again, I'll start the timer again. Right. Dakota 
So how do we know when we've when it's time to start the timer again? When the bearing pointer flips over again, so hit enter and then change that to down. There you go. And then I. Uh, so we're on the from side right now. The yep. from side is the white side. Right. So when when we go back to the purple side, yeah, this will flip one. to two. Also, you'll see this go a beam across these circles and a beam our right wing. When that happens, we start our time. So we just saw the triangle switch to the two indication. We saw the bearing pointer go across the 90 degree point, and we started our timer. Excellent. That's uh, 8330, Mike, NorCal approach. So I'm adjusting it a bit, so we're right on top of where we should be. Very good. Okay. So nice parallel path here. Now we go for a minute, we turn back inbound, we hit nav mode, and we just keep doing this at a uh, fuel efficient uh, uh, power setting. Okay, now we'll go ahead and join the localizer back course. We're going to 